Hello everyone, welcome to my product talk today from Chaos to Control, how a CRM system can transform your business. So we're gonna get, go ahead and get started. My name is Casey Luft and I am the CEO and founder of Clientrix CRM Consulting. We are a technology consulting company and we are partnered with Zoho, which is a software company that has a bunch of different tools, 40 plus different applications that can help transform your business. That's built as the operating system for your business. So we really just help businesses design, implement, and support your customized CRM system using the Zoho software. So to take us back a little bit, for those of you who don't know what a CRM is, it is a customer relationship management tool. Now, these kinds of tools really are just a central repository of all information so that they track all of your different leads, your prospects, your production, your accounting, all of this kind of stuff throws through those kinds of pipelines. So we end up taking chaotic systems in your business we break them down, we simplify them, and we automate them to meet your needs. So I figured it would be good to look at a client profile of what we've worked with before and something to give you a bit of an example that uh, is going to be a good comparable to maybe where you're at in your business. So the client profile we've worked with, uh, let's say someone who has five roofing crews specific on to the roofing contractor side of things. And they want to grow their revenue from five million to seven and a half million, but they're facing some issues. So some of these problems, these are just uh, four of the problems that I want to highlight that are most common within our clients that we're seeing. So their software subscriptions are eating into their bottom line. They have too many different pieces of software that they don't know what it's used for. You don't know if you can collaborate or use these together. Maybe you could reduce the amount of different software you're using and use different features, maybe upgrade to one and reduce the costs overall. Uh, some of these cost thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So by utilizing all these different tools all in one place, it's gonna save your bottom line. There's always tons of manual data entry with this too. If you have different subscriptions that you're using different softwares, then you're gonna have your team that's entering information in different places. You have tons of different data that is all over the place. You're not gonna be able to control it. You're gonna miss stuff. Things are not gonna be in the right spot. And that causes a lot of problems. And a lot of human error is responsible for that. So if you had integrations or connections built with all these different tools, it's much smoother. These clients typically don't have reporting or their job profitability or performance of that reporting is non-existent. And I want to highlight those two. There's obviously a lot when it comes to analytics and capturing in a CRM system, but those two are the most important because job profitability, if you don't have a good sense of where your business is at, what kind of jobs you're taking, how profitable they are, then you don't know how many jobs you're taking that are actually costing you money. So if you don't have a good idea of that, you can't really build in uh, the growth that you want. And so when this looking at this client profile, if you're just taking a bunch of jobs that are losing money or just making even, it's not a good scalable solution. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on actually collecting that information and putting it back into the funnel to make sure that you're creating qualification funnels throughout the process. Lastly, the problem they're facing was basic follow-ups are being missed. So emails, text messages not going out, um, any other type of touch points that just get forgotten about in the process. Or even if you're thinking about production, things not sliding into place. Maybe your production team is not scheduling on time or they forgot to schedule a project and now that project is behind. So little things like that, if you have that manual uh, aspect behind it, you're going to cause some issues. So what we end up doing is we untangle the chaos. And really I can break it down to three different things that cause this at a root cause of it. So we have the process, the technology, and the training. Now all of these different issues come through with that. So all I could go back here and the problems that were faced can be narrowed down to that root cause of process, technology, or training. Now when it comes to process, really your team doesn't know what to do. They are not super familiar with the process. They are not super, it's not standardized. There's no SOPs in place maybe. So if you don't have a good process, then your team isn't going to know what to do. Now, when it comes to technology, depending on the tools you use, maybe it's not being utilized effectively. Maybe you're not happy with the system that you have. So you want to make sure that you're checking that and make sure the technology is solid as well. Lastly is training. Your team may not have been trained properly, or maybe things have changed and they need more training along the way. And so you need to make sure that they have the proper training in order to untangle that chaos. In this case study, it's all three. So I want to showcase a little bit of a basic process flow diagram that we end up creating. So there's a lot going on in this diagram, but in the top left, you're going to see a legend. So the blue squares there are for CRM automation that we can build into it. The gray is manual, manual pieces of the puzzle that your team needs to do. 
Your yellow is your booking tool that you can book inspections, booking roof installs, that kind of stuff. You have your brown, which is more of your picture taking tool. So when you're on site taking pictures, checking it out. You have your purple, which is more of your sales enablement tool. So something like sumo quote or uh, leap, something like that. Uh, the purple squares there, they are for decision trees, making sure people are actually going through the right process. You have your orange, which is your supplier or vendor ordering from. Um, in this case, we've actually integrated Roof Hub. Um, we'd love to integrate Beacon and a Convoy. There's a few that are here. We'd love to integrate with those if we can. So that's something we're looking at doing as well. And then the black is just the pipeline stage. So very briefly, what's happening here is you have your leads coming in. They're going through the qualification form. They're booking an inspection with you. Then you're going to do the on-site visit. So do the on-site visit. You throw all that information into your sales enablement tool, get them to sign it. Then you move on to the actual production stage. You make sure that uh, your team is scheduling the production properly. You're ordering materials. You're doing the install. You're doing the final checks. And then you get paid. And a lot of people forget that your job doesn't end after you get paid from the final bit. You have to follow up. You have to check in with, with your customers. You want to make sure they're happy. And this is the typical process that all of our clients will follow through. Now, it can be a lot more complicated. So this is a sales flow diagram that we've done before for one of our clients. Now, you can't see much, but I just want to highlight the fact that this can be a lot more complicated than just a simple flow diagram. So there's a lot of different software that's integrated into this. There's a lot of different automations that are thrown into this really around what your business needs. Now we have production flow. So this is what their production looks like when you're actually really diving in and building fully out to their needs. This is what it looks like. And finally, we have payment. So this is what a payment flow could look like with all the different automations and all the different pieces that are triggering off of that. So there's a few benefits, not only for owners, but for employees as well. So I want to highlight those quickly. So the first is as an owner, you get to develop SOPs and consistency. This is going to lead to better overall processes, not only for you, but for your team. A lot of the time, they're probably coming to you asking how to do stuff. And typically you just say, I don't know, or you give them the process, you train them over and over and over again, and they just don't quite grasp it. So if you have a consistent process, you can guarantee that they're going to be understanding the first time and the only time that they know where to go back and get this information. We also have executive level reporting. So when it comes to performance and job costing, you can build those types of reports. You can build out and actually use this information on executive level to make business decisions. So when it comes to performance, um, a lot of people will miss certain areas of the performance side of things. So if you can easily track things on the back end in the CRM, but on the site, when you're doing actual work, you may not have as many KPIs or measurements that you can take. But if you're doing site visits, if you're doing reviews of people's work, you can absolutely include that in the system. And so you can use that on a reporting level to make sure that your team is doing what they need to do and you're confident they're going to be able to accomplish the job at hand. The other thing is job costing. Now, going back to this, you want to make sure that you're pulling job costing back into your reporting and you can use it as a qualification tool. So you can ensure that your, your tools, your, your leads that are coming in are actually qualified to exactly what you need. Maybe you find that you can only uh, get a good margin off of square, square footage of roofs that are 2000 and over. Um, you might find that anything less than that is just no good. So you can now put that into your sales funnel. Instead of working on, let's say, 30% of your leads coming in that, that are actually qualified for you, you can now focus 100% of your time and effort on to those customers. This also helps improve the bottom line by making sure that your software subscription is basically only one. Maybe there's a few other tools, something like company cam, sumo quote, things like that. You can actually pull in by condensing all of this into one software subscription instead of using so many others. And lastly, you have an efficient team, which is increasing your revenue and your customer satisfaction. Unfortunately, those two things are not mutually exclusive. So if you're focusing on the customer satisfaction, the revenue will come. If you focus only on increasing the revenue, the customer satisfaction is not guaranteed to improve. So you want to make sure that you're focusing on the customer satisfaction side of things. And if you build that out properly and effectively for your, for your customers, you're going to be in a lot better position getting referrals, getting reviews, building that process in to think about how your customer likes and flows through that system. So that's why it's super important to design a system in that process flow diagram that I showed earlier that is super impactful for your customers. Now, it's not just owners, it's also employees. So when it comes to employees, you want to have them spending less time doing the shitty tasks that they hate and more time doing the things they actually like. 
this is actually going to grow leaders within your organization. It's going to allow your team to pick up new skills, to upskill, to become better at uh, a variety of different things. So if you focus on more of what they actually enjoy, they're going to become happier and they're going to become a better employee for you. You also have an easy to understand process through this all. So people will know what's expected of them. They know how to operate. They know how to actually do the work. They know how to train other people so they're not constantly asking you how to do things. So if you can make the process easy to understand, you can also train people and onboard them a lot quicker than you could otherwise. So obviously being in the northern latitudes, we may not be able to work on roofs or in the construction jobs all the time, which means that you're actually quite limited as to how many employees you can have in a given year. If you need to let people go, you need to rehire people, or you're constantly having a bunch of turnover to train people up, well, now you have these processes that are built in place to ensure that you can quickly, easily ramp up when you need to. And just lastly, the happier team is going to make a larger impact. They're gonna be happier overall, they're learning more, they're making a larger impact. And so if you have that in place, the team's gonna be happier, you're gonna be able to retain them a lot longer. All right, so in order to transition from chaos to control, these are the three things I want you to take away from this talk. You want to design the technology around how your business operates. This means that other applications that are out of the box may not be the best fit, but for a lot of the people that are out there, they're really great, they're really great fit. They are good at what they do, but they design a process around how your business should operate. It's not necessarily the other way around. If you have the flexibility to customize the solution around your needs, you're gonna be a lot better off in the long run if you plan on growing and scaling at that point. Now, these other tools are absolutely great, but there is a use for each of these, and it's important to understand what your limitations are as you're going through. Second, you wanna ensure that you have buy-in from your team. You really wanna make sure that your team is involved in this entire process. If they are not involved, they're gonna go back to the old ways of doing things, and they are not going to be interested in doing the new way. People hate change. People need to be convinced of change that it's good for them. So you have to make sure you get buy-in from them. And through this process, we try to make sure that everyone is involved in the process that should be. We've actually had implementations before where the clients have actually told us how the business operates, but then by the time we go to training and we actually starting to train up their employees, it turns out that's not how they operate. So it's a huge issue if you don't get the team to buy in because they didn't end up moving forward with the changes that were made because they didn't like them. That's not how they use the application. So you have to make sure you get buy-in from the rest of your team. And lastly, you want to make sure you dedicate time for training. You want to make sure that your team is trained up and ready to go on any software solution that you're implementing because if they're not, they're going to go back to the old ways of doing things, whatever is easiest for them. So going back to getting that buy-in, you want to ensure that they have the buy-in to effectively make change within your organization. That is everything for my product talk. Come visit us at booth 354 just over there and enter for your chance to win an Apple iPad as well as some Zoho credits, $300 worth. So swing on by, ask any questions. I'm more than happy to chat with you all. Thanks everyone.